pastor in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, he said, I don't know if Kanye just showed up at the church one day because somebody somebody told Kanye about him and and just said, man, the guy preaches the gospel. He speaks the truth. It's all about God's word. And so Kanye got in touch with them and um, and they just kind of struck up mm. a, a, a friendship. And I think um, my friend has been invited on different occasions, numerous occasions to minister to Kanye and his family and to uh do some bible studies with them and then kanye invited him uh he went out to detroit for one of the sunday services and then i think he was in like i want to say brooklyn or somewhere in new york for another uh sunday service and uh yeah and, and it was kind of interesting uh-huh. because this, this friend of mine adam and i had gone to seminary together and i know uh, all of us from seminary i i, I at one point texted him and just said hey brother i just want you to know i'm praying for you you know and I'm praying for Kanye that it's that, yeah. that it's the real deal for him. And I have no reason to think that it's not, you know, he professes Christ. And so, man, I'm going to take somebody at their word unless their actions start showing otherwise, but I haven't seen that yet, you know, and praise God for that. And, and uh, I was yeah. praying for my friend that he just wouldn't also kind of get sucked into to um, the uh, the glamour, the fame, the fortune, the power, the you know that kind of stuff. Just that the Lord would keep him clean and pure, and and that it would be a, a, a tremendous benefit to Kanye, but also other people, you know, that are that are uh, Kanye is going to be able to yeah, reach absolutely, out to, you know, absolutely. And you know, one thing about Kanye West is that he's actually been coming out a lot lately and saying a lot of things that are concerning. Like he would say. Um, you know, in the music industry, there are people actually mm-hmm. signing their soul away to the devil. Um, and then he has, he also has a famous line where he says, I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal, but at least it came <laughs> with a few toys like a Happy Meal. And so I got to ask you the $50 million question, Jay. Are people selling their soul to the devil? Are they signing contracts with their name and blood uh, and doing rituals and blood sacrifices, All right, as so far as you one, know. In one sense, the Ooh. moment we were conceived, we sold our soul to the devil, right? Because scripture teaches us that, that we were conceived uh-huh. in sin, we are born into sin as sinners, and then as soon as we are able, we choose to sin, right? This goes back to, you know, you don't have to teach a toddler how to say no, do you? It just seems that they learned it all on their own, right? No, um, it's 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 totally natural. It's, natural. Um, it's funny, my my uh, son when he was like, oh gosh, probably three years old, he did the classic, takes the crayon, walks down the hallway with the crayon against the uh, the wall, the big crayon string, and my wife, what are you doing? She goes, oh, my. What are you doing? And he looks at her point blank and just says, Satan made me do it. <laughs> but you chose to do it all on your own so here's my take on that i think i don't think people in hollywood or even the music industry i don't necessarily think they've sold their soul to the devil any more than any other person um who is an unbeliever because basically you're either for god the bible teaches or you are against god there's no middle road and the bible talks about yes that, yeah. that, that we can be enslaved to satan that we are um captured ensnared by him to to uh, to do his will and um and that and that goes for any unbeliever so in other words person who has not come to faith in christ um um through through his grace uh, is is basically doing Satan's will, whether they realize it or not, whether they've made some pact with the devil or not. And and here's the thing: the devil ultimately yeah. only has as much power as the Lord would allow the devil to have, right? Um, so you have temptation by by yeah. Satan, and he's out there in the wilderness, and and three times Satan does have a certain power. He has the ability to do these things. And, and even in one sense, what you might call the miraculous, right? But it's, it's to deceive people. And, um, and he's a powerful figure, but uh-huh. he's not, not as powerful as God. And he's always under God's sovereign control and command. And even when 
even when um, uh, Satan begged God to let him just kind of have it Job, right? Because he hated Job and, and God was tooting Job as, as being a really faithful guy, right? Um, God allowed Satan to do these different uh-huh. things to Job, but only so far, like God didn't allow him to kill Job, you know? Yeah, so ultimately God still has the control over Satan. Satan, you know, can somebody, um, again, the, the scripture teaches that we can be tempted by Satan, but as a Christian, we can always say no to him. So again, I, I don't see that people in the entertainment industry um, sell their soul to the devil any more than, say, or, or doing doing the will of, of Satan just by sheer fact of being an unbeliever because to be an unbeliever means that you actually are God's enemy. You are working against God. And uh, that's, that's a scary place to be for, for anybody. And so, you know, is it safe to say then Jay, that a lot of celebrities, uh, actors, are they being used by Satan to manipulate the world? So if, if we as unbelievers are, are, um, doing you know satan's will then well you could say certainly that could be that but again that's going to be the answer to somebody that's uh an accountant or a bricklayer or a garbage person or a lawyer or whatever as far as they are not for god again you know they're against god now does satan does satan just thrive in hollywood oh i would say absolutely because hollywood now i'm not talking about being an actor or being a filmmaker, but Hollywood, the industry seems to thrive on what me, myself, I, you know, it's, it is, it is so self-serving and people in it are often power hungry or they want the fame or they want the fortune and they are willing to do anything to get it. Well, again, that's not so different from some other industries too, but yes. And, and then when you get, the, the media realm yeah. and, and of course the kinds of product that Hollywood puts out it just seems like man you're in Satan's playground and and so it, would I say that Hollywood is kind of Satan's playground does Satan love Hollywood absolutely absolutely you know because yeah. it's so easy yeah. for him. it's just so easy to to keep people you know just kind of a uh, there under his under his his belt yeah. yeah so look jay and, and and to go back to the movies um look i used to love the movie um oh, not yeah. quite human sure. which you starred in and i've done uh video after video exposing different movies exposing how um satanism is carefully hidden in there or political agendas or even uh transhumanism do you know what that word no. is? transhumanism no. Um, with merging yourself, merging yourself okay. with technology, um, and not quite human is one of those movies, one of those early movies that explored the ideal of AI actually living on Earth sure. with humans. Um, what, are, what is your thoughts on technology and AI? Is it something that we should be worried about? Is it something that we should keep away from our kids because one day they might accept the mark of the beast or, or a microchip in their brain or in their hand or uh, or the, maybe a Terminator scenario happens. What's your thoughts on Man, uh, that, AI Man, now you're today? getting deep. I'm like, oh. so, so, and, and that's <laughs> funny to use the, the not quite human because you're right. I mean, not quite human was a series of Disney movies, three of them. Uh, for the Disney Channel. And like you said, it, that's the early stages of AI stuff because it's much more just kids for fun. You know, um, a scientist, computer guy builds an android and uh, makes him look like a human being. And, mm-hmm. and the point there is, is you know, if you put him in a normal home situation, could he actually learn emotion? Could he learn to, in a sense, reprogram himself to become more human-like, you know? Scenario, but in a much yeah. more, uh, uh, you know, playful uh, Disney-esque kind of way um, versus, you know, 